Hey, wake up with Harry Hurley and drive home with me, Sean Hannity, 3 to 6. It's all happening here on WPG Talk Radio 104.1. This is Harry Hurley, and uh, this is Investigation Colin Bell. A number of months ago, Hurley in the Morning began an investigation regarding New Jersey Senate candidate Colin Bell. Today, we will reveal some of the results that call into question, in my view, Colin Bell's qualifications to hold elective office and his choice to make money on the backs of struggling homeowners facing foreclosure. You'll have to decide after you hear the facts what they mean to you. First, a timeline of key events. In March of 2009, Colin Bell chose to represent New Hope Modification, which was being investigated for allegedly defrauding homeowners who wanted to refinance their mortgages. These were struggling homeowners who desperately wanted to stay into their homes, so they paid money that they didn't have in the first place. They were behind, but they were required to pay up front, and they paid to hopefully be able to refinance their mortgages. In the end, the company that Bell worked for, New Hope, took the money and did not provide the help that they had promised, uh, certainly not in total. Sadly, this disgraceful disservice caused many homeowners to end up in foreclosure. And in November of 2009, Bell went from working with a company accused of defrauding homeowners to creating his own company called JJCS Holdings, which was now in the business of making money from families who were struggling to stay in their homes and pay their mortgages. More about JJCS Holdings a little bit later. In April 2010, New Hope paid $11.45 million in civil penalties for its activities in a consent judgment with the New Jersey Attorney General, New Jersey Division of Consumer Affairs, and the Commissioner of the New Jersey Department of Banking and Insurance. State Attorney General Paul Adal at the time said New Hope, the company Bell advocated for, quote, made money by selling false hope to trusting people during their darkest financial hour, end quote. The Camden Courier Post later wrote that, quote, even after Bell's clients agreed to pay more than $11 million in a civil settlement, the 2,000 customers they defrauded were unlikely to get all of their money back. Bell couldn't be reached for comment, end quote. Before we go further, I want to impress upon you that this is not an investigation into clients who Bell has represented though I have familiarized myself with personal stories of the homeowners who were deserved by New Hope modification, including, as the Philadelphia Inquirer reported at the time, the company Bell worked for forced a single mom out of her home who was suffering from cervical cancer. That is merely the backstory and a prelude. My investigation is about what Bell himself did next. By October 2010, JJCS Holdings, Colin Bell, began buying tax liens. In January 2011, JJCS Holdings, Colin Bell, purchased his last tax lien. In April 2011, Bell was nominated by the Atlanta County Democrats for freeholder. For those unfamiliar with why someone would buy tax liens, the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs website clearly explains if a homeowner falls behind in paying their municipal taxes, anyone, in this case Colin Bell, can purchase the tax lien, basically the back taxes owed from the municipality. By doing so, the purchaser of the tax lien can then legally charge the homeowner 18% interest while also having the right to foreclose on the property if the homeowner doesn't pay. In other words, and this is what I think of this type of cottage industry, an unscrupulous investor can use the hardship of homeowners, whether they have lost their jobs or their unemployment benefits, to take advantage of the fact that the homeowners are unable to pay their taxes and desperately want to stay in their homes. The unscrupulous investor can then charge the homeowner 18%. Think about a normal investment like a CD gives you what? In the range of 1% to 3% if you're lucky, depending on the length with the bonus of having the opportunity to take away the home completely out from under families if the families cannot pay the 18% interest. Wall Street refers to this as, quote, a vulture investment. For example, 
With an $1,800 purchase of a tax lien, Bell was looking for a $250,000 payday. To all of my listeners and readers, all you have to do is Google the term vulture investments to learn about the business Bell chose to create. Now, let me make it clear. It is legal for anyone to purchase tax liens. However, I strongly believe that the public retains the right to process the news of this business formed by Bell and referred to by Wall Street as a vulture investment and decide what it means to you. I've done a tremendous amount of research about this type of business, why people create the business, how they make money from buying the tax liens. The bottom line is, and not to be redundant, but rather in order for to help you understand the gravity of how Bell was trying to make money, I think it is fair to point out Wall Street and a number of media outlets describe the business of buying tax liens as, quote, vulture investments, end quote. I've obtained the incorporation papers of JJCS Holdings, Colin Bell, and certificates of sale for the tax liens of at least five struggling homeowners purchased by JJCS Holdings, Colin Bell, showing that while representing New Hope during the height of the foreclosure crisis, Colin Bell tried to cash in on the crisis by creating his own vulture investment business to purchase tax liens from families who desperately wanted to stay in their homes. Basically, they had to pay Bell 18% interest when they were unable to pay their mortgage in the first place, which created the tax lien to begin with, or lose their lifetime investment in their homes to Bell. Either way, it was a win-win scenario for Colin Bell, who either made an 18% profit or got their entire home. Think about it. What Bell chose to do was to open up his own cottage industry for himself, buying up tax liens from struggling families and demanding double-digit interest from people who were about to lose their homes. These people had tax liens in the first place because they couldn't afford to make their payments. And then if they couldn't pay their 18% interest to Bell, he could take their entire home. A review of the timeline and the facts appear to make it fair and reasonable to conclude that the sole purpose of Colin Bell's business was to prey upon families in their darkest financial hour. Further, it's not a stretch to say that in representing New Hope, a company that the attorney general, then Paula Dow, fined more than $11 million and stripped them of their license to do business in New Jersey, that Bell directly assisted with hurting thousands of middle class families. Bell figured out how to make a buck off of the foreclosure crisis by creating a vulture investment business by buying tax liens out from under struggling homeowners. In other words, Bell's goal was to profit through other people's agony and misery. Now, in the past, Bell has excused his work with New Hope by comparing himself to John Adams defending the British soldiers who were involved in the Boston Massacre. Sidebar, I think this proves that Bell listens to Hurley in the morning because that example, in another way, has been mentioned on this program several times, but not in a comparison to then saying, hey, I'm going to go do my tax lien business now. But we do know this. John Adams never turned traitor and joined the British Army. We do know that. Again, while buying tax liens is legal, I find it reprehensible that Bell, who is seeking public office, was doing this by design during the Great Recession when Atlanta County families were struggling to put food on their table and provide for their children with Atlanta County having the highest home foreclosure rate and the highest unemployment rate in the entire nation. Of course, the timeline shows no record of Bell buying a tax lien since January of 2011. Want to know why? Yet allow me to point out that JJCS Holdings, Colin Bell, remains an active for-profit corporation, according to the records I have obtained from the state of New Jersey, which means that Bell is ready and able to legally purchase more tax liens at any time. So why did Bell place his business on a temporary hold pattern? Again, the timeline points us towards the truth as I view it. Bell purchased his last tax lien in January of 2011 and was nominated by the Atlanta County Democrats for freeholder in April of 2011, which meant he had announced his intention to run months earlier than that because you just don't get nominated you know, in the split second. So he knew he was running. He was running and trying to get it. So right around the time he purchased his last tax lien, 
he was making his move to run for freeholder. It appears as though as soon as Bell knew he was interested in running for freeholder, he stopped purchasing tax liens right before accepting the Democratic nomination for freeholder at large in Atlantic County. You decide if you believe that this is because Bell knew the appearance of owning a vulture investment business designed to make money on the backs of struggling families that you want to represent would reflect negatively upon him. You can argue this logic if you choose, but you can't deny the unambiguous timeline. That is not in dispute. In fact, Bell has been a perpetual candidate for office since 2011. He lost in 2011. He won a freeholder seat in 2012 under Obama in column B. Then Bell ran again in 2015 for the New Jersey General Assembly and lost. He lost his bid for reelection to the freeholder board before that, and now he is running for the state Senate, all while Bell continued to quietly file his annual paperwork with the state to keep his vulture investment business alive and well. I find it disturbing that Bell created the business in the first place and hides it as he is campaigning for office, and I urge our readers and our listeners to review the facts. As I pointed out in an earlier column a few months ago, Bell's lack of support in the Democratic primary, where nearly 4,000 Democrats who actually voted and Bell was running unopposed, did not vote for him. This, in my view, points to trouble for Colin Bell in the general election. It's why I do not believe the phony poll that was released late last week. Nonetheless, if the state Senate race doesn't work out for Bell, He seems pretty well positioned to go back to his vulture investment business and make 18 percent off of more struggling families, all the while hoping that they miss a payment so he gets their entire home. As a closing bonus, Bell's wife has already been vetted by the New Jersey State Police for Superior Court's judgeship. This is something that we reported many months ago. Uh, This is a potential lifetime job that pays one hundred and sixty five thousand dollars a year with benefits. I have numerous well-placed sources who have approached me about this issue, more about my investigation of that in the future. Finally, I hereby invite Colin Bell to appear with me on air any time of his choosing. I would even ask a scheduled guest to reschedule to make it convenient for Colin Bell for him to do as he's done in the past. He's been on this program in the past to discuss his tax lien business. I want to provide you, Colin Bell. I know you're listening right now. Good morning. You have great taste in morning talk shows. I'd like you to have the opportunity to refute anything that I've reported and appear with me. I think it would be a great opportunity. And you know, because you've been here before, that you will be treated fairly because all guests are treated fairly. I've got to break. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Your calls are standing by next. Don't go away. You'll be first up as soon as we come back. I am Hurley in the morning. This is WPG. Hi, it's Mark Levin. Join me at 6 this evening. Now back to the mayor of the morning, Harry Hurley, on WPG Talk Radio 104.1, South Jersey's talk station. 52 minutes past the hour. Your phone calls now at 609-407-1450. Welcome to Hurley in the morning. You're on the air. Caller, may we help you? Yes, uh, Harry, I was calling in uh, concerning the tax that the purchasing agreement that uh, Colin Bell was involved in? Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you back no, there. That's okay. Yes, uh, I mean, that's the, the, the tax sales, I mean, I know uh, in local town of Brigantine, they started them off at 18% and people bid them down. I know people that have went in there and bought tax liens against people's properties to help them make sure someone wouldn't foreclose on that on their property. But sometimes... All right, so let me ask you this, because I knew I was waiting for this. I was actually waiting for a wonderful Colin Bell supporter to call in. That may or may not be you. You just may be a very fair-minded individual like I believe that I am, and you want to give the benefit of the doubt. How about this? How about this problem to the equation? If it is so altruistic, and if, if this, in fact, was not a vulture type of situation, but really... The, the most amazing, kind, and helpful person that wanted to keep people in their homes, how come he stopped it as soon as he was running for public office? I'm not saying that he was doing it for that purpose, but I'm saying that it starts at 18% and they bid on them. Sometimes people get 6%, 12%. Sometimes they get zero, and there's been times in Brigantine where people— Oh, they get zero, so people are buying them in hopes that they can't 
pay anything. And then where's the person? Are they making it because if the person defaults, then they get the whole home? Here's here's a good thing to do. When you're dealing with a public figure that's running for office, if he would have continued to do this loud and proud and I am helping people, this is a wonderful thing. I really did this because of what I learned happens to people out there. But the the reality is, in his case, he represented a client sort of in the business, loan modification business. He went a different route. He opened up his own business because he saw, my gosh, look at this. We're in a great recession. There are so many people losing their homes. I can buy up these tax liens. The worst case scenario is I'm going to earn buku interest. I guarantee you they weren't doing zero, but if they did, then I'll do a new report that says he did all this. Everything was accurate, but he did 0% interest loans because then you're really you know, uh, doing something altogether different uh, and that it was for that reason. But since the timeline says – that he stopped doing it as soon as he found out he could be a, a Democratic nominee for freeholder. I think the timeline is pretty solid. What do you think? You don't have anything else to say? No, Harry, what I was going to I'll, I'll, I'll end it with this. is I know some very well-reputable people that have been involved in this business. I mean, and I know a guy that was the head of a Republican Party in the town that did it. You know what I mean? All right, so let, listen, I really appreciate your persistence here because you're just talking about the the good side and that this is really, you know, I guess what you're trying to do is to make my report look wrong by saying how great this is, how wonderful it is. Then why doesn't he do it out loud when he's running? That's the point that I think I've proven here, even with your call, which I appreciate. Welcome to Hurley in the Morning. You're on the air. Caller, did you hear the beep? Let's try it again. You are there. I hear you. I hear a little bit of noise in the background. Yep, you're on. Go. Attack stuff. Uh, I get a little sick and tired. Your, your phone is blipping in and out. You said you get a little sick and tired of what? As you know, with the taxes, ever since you get in there, Sir, we're not doing it. We're not doing anything funny here, but like many of your words are not broadcasting. Let me put you back on hold. I'm going to re-engage the connection. For some reason, sometimes this changes it. So let's start. Yeah. Let's. I hear you now, but let's start again. So you you were saying something about being sick and tired of taxes. Makes it yeah. You know, is lower. It's crazy. Well, here's what here's what we have to do. I'm disengaging the phone. If you can hear me, call me right back at the same number that you're on, 609-407-1450, and we will get you on. What I want to do, and l- listen, I expected this. I mean, I know politicians. Colin Bell has somebody call in to say, hey, it's really a good thing. And it isn't 18%. It gets a bid. It can be it can be a lot less than 18%. It could be down to 0%. And they can help people. This is, I mean, this is unbelievable. I mean, before I know it, I'll be apologizing for mentioning that Colin Bell did this until he ran for office. And then he quietly kept it open, but he didn't do it anymore. So if it's so great, why is it a secret? If it's so great, why did he stop? Why did he stop within the same time frame as when he was running for freeholder? Here's the one thing that I am very confident about, that we have many thousands of listeners and that you're really smart and that you get it. You get seminar callers. You get it when someone's trying to explain. So, it's, I mean, and I look, I have to treat that like it was perfectly legitimate, that it was not a Colin Bell stooged call and but when i kept asking him well what what about the fact that he stopped doing it right when he ran for freeholder and then he ran again for the assembly and lost and now he's running again and we don't hear anything about this except he quietly files and i have through 2016 so if he stopped doing it he stopped doing it in 2017 to the caller, I, I tried. You, you you couldn't be heard. I don't know what, what your point was going to be. It sounded like you were going broad-based taxes and nothing to do necessarily with, with my report, which is okay. 
I love taking calls about anything that you want to talk about. Um, we will have a little bit more open forum right after Atlantic City Electric presents. They're going to be on next. Uh, this I have 50 or more documents to support everything that's in my investigative report. All of it. All the filings. The, the people. Human interest stories that would make you cry, including a woman with cervical cancer. So many stories. It is what it is. Colin Bell did it. He can call himself John Adams. That's what gets that's going to be his new nickname. 